Hi Oslo users, we're pleased to provide a tutorial this time on Gaussian beams and the paroxial Gaussian beam analysis that can be done in the program. Oslo facilitates optical uh, layout in systems that have lasers and Gaussian beams. Uh, it was developed by uh, some very good experts uh, in this area. Uh, in the early days of the program. So uh, this tutorial, we're going to cover paroxial analysis for uh, uh, non-skew symmetric beams in particular as an example. Uh, so we're going to review some theory and Oslo documentation in the first video. It's a five video set. The second video is to set up an optical system, which will be a catalog lens. The third uh, video will run uh, Gaussian beam tracing for the system to show you, uh, to have you work through uh, how that is function how that functions uh, then we will in the fourth video show how to get the beam waste in the praxial image plane and then the fifth video will be on point using the uh, point spread function analysis tools for these kinds of systems there's a lot of additional capability in the program uh, more than the basics uh, that we're showing here in the tutorial so this video is going to review the theory and oslo documentation and so if you'd like to open it up or study it, uh, you can finish watching the video. Here is the uh, list of what we're going to do. We're going to show some things from the Oslo Optics reference in two places. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, getting impossible beam settings in the object space. Oslo helps keep people out of trouble for uh, trying. If you try to define a beam, it's possible to define one that is not physically realizable. And uh, Oslo helps to keep you out of trouble. If you're going to, if you do try to do that, uh, then we're going to talk about the uh, start of the laser and system Gaussian beam section in the examples chapter. Then show a couple of things from help that are used in later videos: the ABCD Gaussian beam analysis tool, and then the the plot uh, point spread function and map contour. Basically, all of the looking up documentation is being done in this video. One of the things that I will do is I will pause this video when I'm uh, paging through uh, documentation a little bit. So I open the optics reference and we'll just scroll down at the moment and I'll show the two parts where we're going to view things. So the first is going to be in the fundamentals chapter, this Gaussian beam propagation, just show you the uh, start to that. Uh, it also includes information on propagation circles and then this ABCD algebraic method. The second section is actually in the examples portion. So if we go down uh, the examples chapter, so chapter 10 is the example chapter. Your version of this book may uh, have changed, but we're going to keep this information in here because it's pretty core. Uh, so look for lasers and Gaussian beams. And then this has a, a number of different examples. And some of what I'm going to do is going to follow a, a little bit of this information. So uh, basic Gaussian beam imaging is going to be discussed in some of the material uh, that is contained in there. So I've now scrolled down to the Gaussian beam propagation section and you can see uh, here's a Gaussian beam profile with its radiance, uh, a spot size defined uh, at the 1 over E squared point, which is uh, a standard way of doing this. And the notation that we use in our documentation and in the program follows some pretty standard uh, work in this field, with the exception that the sign conventions for things like the radius of the uh, wavefront curvature uh, is actually has the same uh, notation, uh, sign convention, I should say, that we use for things like surfaces. So be a little bit careful about that. We do encourage you to read this. So in this section, you can see given spot size defined relative to the waist position uh, and uh, wavelength. And then we also have the uh, radius of the wavefront. And what Gaussian beams do is at the waist location, they start off flat as they propagate away. You get a curved wavefront. At, when you move infinitely far away, though, the wavefront becomes flat again. We can define a spot at some location in the beam relative to where the waste was uh, using the 1 over e squared radiance point uh, for that. And so that is given this parameter w, and you can see the radius. So this is 
pretty standard sorts of stuff. The rest of this section talks about the propagation circles and also the ABCD method. So definitely you're encouraged to read this. One of the comments I've made is about impossible beam settings. Now if you look at this, it starts off flat and you know if you're infinitely far away or go extremely far away, it becomes quite flat again. So at some point in between the waist and going extremely far away, the wavefront reaches its maximum amount of curvature or the minimum radius of curvature. And if you try to set the program up with a given laser, if we look here, the maximum curvature you can get is going to depend on the size of the waist, W0, and the wavelength. So it's possible that if you try to set up a beam with too curved of a radius, the laser you you would not be able to find the location to set your laser beam up appropriately uh, where it's physical because it never reaches that uh, radius of curvature. And if you actually go in and solve the, uh, and I did this in Mathematica, could certainly do this in CCL if we wanted to do the numerical analysis, but uh, what I do is I've set up this uh, this equation for the radius of curvature and I've tried to set it equal to some certain value so I say it's equal to some value uh, and I move that value to the right hand side and then I solve for that equation to equal zero. It's a pretty standard thing to do in this program and here's the point uh, we've defined a 632.8 nanometer, although here my units are in millimeters, and a beam waste of 0.25 millimeters. And you can see there is a solution. Uh, there's actually two solutions uh, to this, uh, but they're real. That's the point. So it is possible to uh, get a laser beam set up with that radius of uh, curvature. It's possible to do, but let's say that we have a larger beam waist of now 0.5 millimeters and the same wavelength of 632.8. When we go to solve this, you can see we end up with imaginary numbers. That doesn't work. That's an impossible beam setting. And if you tried to enter in this bottom set of parameters into Oslo into our tools, then uh, for the object beam, the program would give you an error message. And I'll show that in a later video. So I've now scrolled down to the lasers and Gaussian beams section. In here it talks about specifics on the ABCD matrix and uh, includes a couple of equations uh, in, that define what the uh, size of the beam spot is in the proxio image plane compared to what it is in the object plane and as expected it's just related by the transverse magnification, the proxio magnification of the system and also it, here's an equation that gives the uh, radius of the wave front at uh, the image plane relative to what it was uh, in the object plane. Now, uh, one thing to note that's important is that there's a focal shift effect that if you actually want the beam waste in the uh, image plane, then what you would actually need to enter in, it, in is a radius of the focal length of the lens divided by the uh, praxial magnification in for the radius into this formula. Now there is a little nuance that I'll show in the fourth video that you actually want to enter the negative into that because these equations are coming from laser theory and we have a, a different radius of curvature. So uh, this equation uh, is important. So these are in a sense are the quote unquote imaging equations uh, for a laser for the spot size and for the uh, radius of the wavefront. Very important. The rest of this section goes through some conventions and things to remember and then some uh, information that is similar to the uh, tutorial that we're actually running today including the point spread function analysis. So the last uh, two things that I've promised is a little bit of information from our help system. So when we uh, set up our system we're actually going to run this ABCD analysis. Well, that's actually defining it as a, a specific laser source. So here's the praxial Gaussian beam ABCD that we're going to use. And if we go to the help section on this, you can see it defines spot size, waste uh, spot size, waste distance, um, gives us these same equations and gives us different output that we're going to get when we run this command. So it's definitely encouraged to do that. Again, I absolutely love this trick where we can hit the question mark and get to the page that we're interested in. So I've used that here. You could also, of course, uh, type in ABCD Gaussian beam analysis into the search. 
etc. Uh, the other thing we're going to do in the in this set of videos is we're going to use the point spread function tool. So here, if we go to plot point spread function scans and we hit uh, help here, this one because that window pops up it switched out so I have to come back here and I'm just going to emphasize this thing uh, down here at the bottom when you actually run this command uh, you have a choice um, uh, there are Gaussian beam properties that need to be entered in setup if you're going to be modeling a Gaussian beam which is what we're going to do and if we were to go here I'm going to open the lens spread suit editor and then the setup you can see down here there's these Gaussian beam properties and you can look that up in help as well